Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Malta, I'm the CTO of Vercel, and today I want to talk about the front-end cloud and generative UI, which is not the same as generative AI, but obviously very related. To kind of set the stage here, I, I think it's, there's a, this observation we're in the middle of a rise of the front-end. Um, this is, you know, sample data from Stack Overflow kind of showing how Ruby on Rails is obviously more of a back-end framework. It's kind of tapering out while React is really kind of rising to the moon. And, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense that the front end being the, the place where you turn your product, your IT capabilities, and your services into something that people could actually interact with. It's where you meet your customers, users, and partners, and it is where you uh, differentiate yourself from the competition. Our general thesis is, and this might be a bit of a hot take, that companies have underinvested in their front end capabilities relative to their back end capabilities, right? And you know, I, can, I think you can see that here as well, right? Like it's, it's what people do, and it's, it's fine, right? And I think, especially in the age of AI, this might actually become even more of a problem because AI is kind of commoditizing much of the knowledge in your organization, and so the, the front end becomes kind of the final frontier of differentiation. It's where you kind of, you know, leapfrog your competition um, and become the leader in a business. Now, we describe ourselves as kind of the, the missing part in the application stack where you actually run your front end application on the front end cloud. Our systems both deliver applications and websites to users. And our developer experience platform helps you iterate on the user experience to reach the best possible outcomes. So speaking of user experience, the front end industry is in the middle of a journey from monolithic systems to composable architecture. However, when I'm actually talking to brands and enterprises, what I'm seeing is lots of monolithic systems, where you buy a vendor like a CMS system or a shop system and you're stuck with their capabilities. It's really like this old school kind of shrink wrap software buying um, system. And in fact, it really often looks a little bit like this, right? Where you have this like huge system, it's very hard to change, and user experience takes the back seat. And that's particularly problematic in the age of AI. Imagine your website has built one of these huge legacy systems, and now you want to add like an AI chatbot, which I think everyone here probably has thought about a little bit. And, but what do you do, right? Do you now wait for your vendor to actually give you that capability? That might take forever. So these monolithic front ends are not adaptable. Cost of running them is often very high. Scaling is hard. And it's very difficult to implement best practices for speed and user experience. You're just not flexible. You know, remember that AI chatbot, like how, how would you implement it, right, in this monolithic system? Clearly, this is what we want, right? We want everything to be amazing, seamless, speed, scalable. So I think there is relative consensus that the answer to this problem is to implement composable architecture. And the way that works is you build a composable front end, you have complete control over the user experience, and then you talk to other services as APIs. And that your legacy system might actually be just this now exposing an API that your new modern front end um, talks to. And so again, like I talked about this AI chatbot you want to integrate. In this world, it's just another service and your composable front end, and you just do it, right? There's just no uh, place for even you know, check in and, and wait for anyone's roadmap. And that's really where we move this composable front end approach and, and the role of our cell, right? And where we call ourselves the front end cloud. When you, you know, go and ditch your classic vendor and turn them into an API and you have all these APIs, now you suddenly actually need a place to run your front end workload, right? And that is on the front end cloud. Now, that also sounds like a lot of work. Previously, you just bought something from a vendor and now you have to build it yourself, right? And that's where frameworks like Next.js come in who are, which are actually at the, at the center of making this work efficient, right? So you're building your own front end, but actually building your own front end has become much cheaper than it used to be. And then you connect it to your CMS and to other data service to, to assemble the user experience of your choice. 
Now, on the technical side, when you actually go on Vercel, it actually runs on, on AWS's global edge, giving you excellent performance. And my favorite kind of study that shows the impact of having great performance is this study from Deloitte that was originally commissioned by Google. What they've shown is that user experience is really evident in terms of business performance. Um, what they saw is that for every 100 milliseconds, 0 0.1 seconds, on a retail side, conversions grew by 8%. And on travel side, it was even 10%. So it's really clear that better user experience, better developer experience really makes a big impact on, on your business. Now, I mentioned frameworks and how they're a key enabler for enterprises to ship their own composable uh, front-end experiences without exposing co costs. But we had reInvent, and so I think we should check in with Werner uh, about what he has to say about frameworks. And, and you know, a couple of years ago, he had this like, big slide saying, you know, we're doing primitives, not frameworks. I think it's a really interesting point in that that is, yes, that's, he's right about this, right? That's the right way to design AWS. But it's actually not necessarily the right way to build applications, right? And so my thesis is the opposite, which is that you should build applications with frameworks, not based on primitives. The primitives are there, but you don't necessarily want to touch them. So what front-end frameworks are do is they're the foundational backbone for modern web development, offering a robust toolkit, empowering developers to create dynamic and responsive user interfaces. And what the front-end cloud is bringing is the shift to what we call framework-defined infrastructure. In framework-defined infrastructure, we compile your application that built to a framework to run on the cloud by, by determining the primitives on the cloud that you need from the code you write. Right? And so you don't directly program the primitives. Instead, you just write code to your framework, and it just runs on the cloud. And, and that gives you the the benefit of, of very fast iteration velocity without having to you know, um, now run everything in a monolithic application. Speaking of frameworks, um, we're the makers of Next.js, which is the number one framework for web development with over 5 million downloads per week. It now runs very large chunks of the web, including the largest brands and ch game-changing technology like ChatGPT. And I talked earlier about how user experience and developer experience go hand in hand. Developer experience is the developer productivity, right? So how fast you can iterate. And the faster you can iterate, the better outcomes will be. In fact, my hot take is that iteration velocity is actually the solution to all known software problems. Because as software engineers, I think there's one thing that we know is true, is that we will make mistakes. And we aren't going to build the right thing on the very first try. So the only professional thing that we can do is to iterate and fix things, because we know, there will, you know everything won't be perfect. And when I talk about iteration velocity, it's really important that ve the velocity part is a vector. right? It's both about speed and direction. Velocity means iterating faster, but also making better decisions on every step of the way. And hence, our developer experience platform is designed to optimize, iter optimize iteration velocity at every step of the way. So instead of one slow development cycle, we have you, again, help you move faster every step of the way. So from early iteration over bug fixes and then experimentation on the production product, you're optimizing as you go. Now, I'm kind of just structuring kind of the, the, the way the platform helps you at every kind of step of the life cycle. So the first thing you do is you develop your application. I already talked about Next.js, which obviously is a very important part of being fast at developing. And then we're making technologies like Turbo Repo and Turbo Pack that dramatically improve build performance, both during development and deployment, so that you can ship faster. And we heavily invested in technology called React Server Components that makes it way easier to iterate on integrating data into your front-end applications. Now, once you actually build something, you want to preview it, right? You want to share it with your stakeholders. Um, on the Vercel platform, every time you push a commit, we will give you a direct 
immutable deployment that represents that change, and you can share it with your stakeholders. Now, that would be one thing. That's already cool, right? And, and, and that's the thing that almost is something that people expect now, but it doesn't stop there, right? So on that preview deployment, you have the capability to add comments in just kind of the exact same way how you would do that on a Figma file or maybe on a Google Doc, right? So you actually have a feedback cycle where you send that preview deployment to the stakeholder that actually you know, asked for the feature, maybe a product owner or something like that, and they can inline give you feedback. And then obviously also important is that the builds are super fast. They actually get you the premium deployment so you're not getting out of sync with your process. And then finally, once you ship, once you actually have that application in production, um, you obviously want continuous deployment so things are actually quickly in production. Um, and then we take, developed a technology called Edge Config that allows you to globally push configuration application to the entire Edge, to every compute unit in your system, and very quickly run stuff like A-B tests and other form of experimentation um, so you can actually learn from what you have in production. And then finally, I mentioned how we know we will make mistakes. We have a technology called Instant Rollback where at any moment you can say, oh my god, I have a problem, let's roll back to a known good version, and that takes um, a second or less. So very different from maybe like redeploying the Kubernetes cluster and like making seconds or even many minutes. Just showing a few examples from our customers. Um, this one I really love is an AI startup called Viable, and they're utilizing our commenting product. So we're going to have an engineer, makes a change for cell producers, as I mentioned, this preview deployment. And then you have this commenting feature, as you can see on the screenshot, it really looks very similar to Figma um, or Google Docs, right? And it allows you to give inline feedback. And it, it avoids having to go through these heavy issue trackers, making screenshots, posting in Slack, it will get lost, right? This just gets you a comment, it's inline, but it also blocks your GitHub PR, for example, from being submitted. Similar to giving feedback on code, but actually giving feedback on the application. And then another customer of ours, Sonos, they actually saw when they migrated to Vercel, they saw a 75% reduction in their build times, which is obviously like, you know, something we would all appreciate. And then at the same time, without doing any other changes, they also get a 10% improvement in performance. And we earlier saw from the study in Deloitte what that you know, makes a big difference. And they just had a very, very successful Cyber Monday on Vercel. All right. Um, so I mentioned early on I wanted to talk about the front end cloud, and I wanted to talk about generative. UI, not AI, generative UI. Um, and that's where our um, new product, V0, comes in. So again, like you, iteration velocity matters at every stop of the way. And where V0 kind of comes in is at the very, very, very first step, the literal V0 of your application. So what V0 does, it literally builds the V0 of your application from prompts in a similar manner as ChatGPT does. Um, and then you can actually gener it generates code for you that you can directly copy paste into your application. Um, let's take a quick look how this actually looks in production. So you kind of start, you know, obviously with thinking about what you will ship, and then you just write a prompt, right? Whatever, whatever you want to do, right? Um, you submit it, and then the system literally makes you the UI. Um, in, and it you know, usually looks really nice. This is like a dashboard here. OK, we're on the lockout button. And you know, there's all kinds of features, et cetera. Obviously, there's a sharing model. And at the end, you, can, you can just get the source code and can copy and paste it into your application. Now, this is very fast. Um, just give you a few concrete examples of what this actually means. So if you have a public website, you probably have one of these cookie dialogues, right? And you know, I mean, that's probably not the most important part of your application, but it's, you know, it's something you have to do, right? And, and so with V0, you can just tell it, you know, I want a cookie preference dialogue, and these are the things on my particular website that I care about, and it will just, write, it will just give you the UI. And then you click on the code button on the top right. It gives you the code, and you can copy paste it into your application. Very important. It's not done, right? So this, that's, that's why we call it V0, right? It's not, it's not meant to replace the entirety of the, of the process of making an application. 
it just gives you something to get started. Like, I, you, you know, I'm kind of one of the most expert front-end engineers there is, but I don't actually know CSS. So this is like a big deal for me. Like, I, I like, because I, it does all the stuff that that I don't know to, how to do, and then I can I can still do the tweaking, right? Like, I, you know, that that actually make it do what I want. This is another great example. Like, I, you know, let's say I'm starting a SaaS and I want a pricing page, and it does a really good job. Like, this is, you know, this looks reasonable, and you can obviously like iterate on it quite a bit. Probably the most important use case, though, are like dashboards like this one, right? Where it doesn't quite matter like how it looks, you just want to get it out really quickly. And, and I think this is really more remarkable. Like, imagine you're a full stack engineer, you're not the greatest CSS design expert, and, and this is how you start. That's how you start your day. That took you, you know, five minutes, and now you can iterate from there, add features, et cetera. So definitely very exciting. Um, again, like I want to emphasize, this is really about getting started new projects in seconds. It gives you generative UI, you enter a prompt, and you get fully styled HTML. We are, you know, just kind of betting on the same idea of ChatGPT that it is you. You know, it's kind of cool to just describe what you want, and it gets out what you want. And then the code you get is, again, it's not, it's not the production code you will ship, but the code itself is production great, right? Like, you, you're expected to tweak it, but you're not expected to rewrite it. So, you know, you're expected that this is actually uh, what you want to have in production. Cool. And so, just kind of bringing it back, um, iteration velocity is the solution to all known software problems. And our mission is really to go down your development lifecycle and tweak every bit of that lifecycle and allow you to iterate faster. Um, obviously, we'd love for you to have you join us on the journey. Um, obviously, we're also on the internet. And we have a booth over there. After the talk, I'll hang out there and you know, answer your questions, et cetera. But that's all I had today. And, and I'm very happy to answer questions, et cetera, if folks are interested.